Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. This time we're going to be reacting to Kaisa, the Beagle Kaisa reveal. Ooh, there goes my phone. Alright, so basically, Kaisa, really big hinted for the Void event. Void event didn't really happen, we get Star Guardian instead. Whatever. Still, very excited that she's here. She is going to be a mid-range champion? Or so I've heard. With lots of keywords. Lots of them. I can't wait. Let's jump right into it. See what she's got for us. Hunter or the prey? Oh. <laughs> My mind wanders. New keywords evolve. I have plus two plus two. Once you've given or summoned allies with six plus other positive keywords this game. So it's very similar to reputation in that way, where you, but with keywords instead of, you know, striking with five plus power units. All right, seems good. All right, five mana, four, four, quick attack, send us stat lines. Uh, when I'm summoned or round start, if you have the attack token, create a second skin in hand. All right, and that's basically Riven. So a Riven, Senna mi mix match. All right. Understood. Have a nice day. Here is where we make our stand. Oh, wait, what, what's that? That's the second skin. Zero mana. Okay, it's fleeting. Um, focus. Grant allied Kaisas everywhere. Hey, that works with Legion Marauder. <laughs> Grant Kaisa's everywhere, other allies positive keywords. Wait. You know how Riot changed Legion Marauder to Fearsome, right? Just give Kaisa, just give Kaisa Overwhelm. So, like, you have an Overwhelm unit, you give it to Kaisa, and now Legion Marauder has Overwhelm. Easy. <laughs> I know what they are. I know how to destroy them. All right. That's a, that was that's a little crazy right there. Oh yeah, and of course spell shield works with her as well. Makes me stronger. Wait, does that say deal one to a follower? Wait, if it's deal one to a follower, that's crazy, crazy bad. I'll give you that. Hmm. Pantheon. I mean, I guess Pantheon makes sense. We have something the void will never understand. Me. Wait. <laughs> what? What was that line? We have something the void will never understand. Me. That's a little pretentious. <laughs> oh, Kaisa. Oh, Kaisa, Kaisa, Kaisa. You look like a fun card. But that, that was a little... Mm. Alright, so we have... Obviously, we have the same stats when I... Wait. Does she not gain stats when she levels up? Oh, she doesn't gain stats when she levels up. Oh, wait. Evolve gives her plus two, plus two. So it's like... Okay. Alright, I understand, I understand. That makes sense. When I'm summoned or round start, if you have the attack token, create a second second hand. That's the same as for attack. Deal one for each positive keyword I have to an enemy or the enemy. Wait. Does that mean you choose? No, wait. Lowest health first. Oh, wait. Oh, so it, it attacks. Wait, it attacks lower health minions, like, it'll attack minions first, and then the Nexus? Hmm. Alright. We'll have to see. Adapt and evolve. Hmm. Oh, yeah, that's, that is a little strong, isn't it? I'll show you how to fight. You, you basically get... 
Wait, what's this? Kaisa Supercharge? Three mana focus speed grant grant an ally overwhelm? And spell shield? Right? What are you doing? We just nerfed some blessed vigor? No, so wait, it wasn't called that. It was what was it called? The overwhelm card. That grants plus one plus two. And used to grant overwhelm. What is that called? Was it not? Was it not? Some blessed vigor? Anyways, we just nerfed that card because it was too powerful and faded. And now you're printing Kaisa Supercharge, which is at focus speed, not even slow speed, focus speed, that gives overwhelm grants, overwhelm, and spell shield. What the heck, Riot? What the heck? And Kaisa doesn't even look that bad of a champion on on first glance. I don't. Mm, I do not agree. I do not agree with this decision. Gotta hit them hard. Come on. Mm. Wait, but. Hmm? Okay, so it, it's random between whether it hits a uh, minion or not. Okay. Hmm. So long, boy. See you next time. Hmm. Lots of things to think about here. Lots of these cards. I see them now, but I I'm gonna really take a look at them at the Mobilitics site. So I'll see you real soon. And we're back. All right. We have the Kaisa. Kaisa level up. Looks like a strong champion. She doesn't have to see you get these keywords, so she can evolve in deck, and that's always good. And when you evolve her in deck, and then you play a 5-mana 6-6, six, six, seems pretty good to me. And then we, you, that gives you value each round, and allows you to start spreading your keywords everywhere. Yeah, that's... this is good. Especially since it's everywhere, so even if you kill a Kai'Sa... You can still still have those keywords printed onto the next one that you play. Which is pretty strong. Then we have the supercharge. And since it's yeah, since it's Kai says you can main deck this. What the heck, Riot? I Shreem is already a pretty strong region, alright? This is like like for an example, like not even just for Kaisa, but for like Cards like Sivir. Like, even after you've popped the spell shield of Sivir, like, let's say you pop the spell shield with a slow mana card, or a fa even a fast mana card, uh, and then, and then, after their turn passes back, they just supercharge, they get, they get the spell shield back, and then they get Overwhelm. Their Sivir level, and everything gets spell shield and Overwhelm again. I, I mean, and quick attack. What? 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 What have you done? And it's, and you're, you're like, well, just put two spells in the stack. But then may I introduce you to right of negation, which would completely blow you out of the water. So in in a region with deny already in it, we have a preemptive deny. That's. Three mana. Like the, the biggest the only weakness of this card is that you can't do it in response to something, but in a lot of cases you don't even need to. You don't even need to. You just preemptively put it on there. I was like, oh, now my unit has spell shield and it won't go away until you pop it. Deal with it. Hmm. I don't agree. It's too strong. I don't agree. Alright, and this is the Kathian Rain. This is the skill of Kaisa. That's still just as confusing. The wording is confusing. I'm guessing this lowest health burst is applying to units. So like, if there was a bigger cost unit or health unit compared to a lower cost unit, it would prioritize the lower cost unit over the higher cost unit when making, when dealing the one damage. But that doesn't mean it will guarantee to hit the unit, it could also hit the nexus. That's, that's, at least that's what I'm reading. And that's pretty good, I guess. I wish. <laughs> imagine if Make It Rain had this, uh, <laughs> had this uh, lowest health burst. 
Uh, <laughs> that would be stupid. All right. One mana, one one Voidling. Shurima. Evolve. So it can become a one mana three three. While in hand, I have a random keyword that changes each round. When I'm summoned, grant me this keyword. All right. So even later on the game, this is not too bad. Imagine like you get late in the game or later in the game, you cock evolve, you're really low on health, and this pops up and gives you lifesteal. Or if you're going for the kill, you get elusive or challenger. Pretty solid card. It also allows you to have access to certain positive keywords you may not get from from your region combination. Which I think is the real strength of this card, right? Like it allows you to be flexible in how you approach proccing a ball. Alright. So I, I think it will be a solid card in the archetype. As long as like Isa like depending on the region combinations, like it could be difficult to get six keywords or it could be really easy. It depends on how easy or hard that is, depending on the region combinations. Alright, we have Void Blaster. 4 mana 4-4 four, four is a very vanilla stat line. Very vanilla. Uh, but it comes with Evolve and Overwhelm. So it can become a 4 mana 6-6 six, six Overwhelm. Which is decent. Definitely a decent card. Um, I think it's just an alright all card. Just a basis. Just pretty alright. Um, kind of actually similar to the Voidling. Just a pretty alright card. Honestly, I think Voidling is probably the weakest card we've seen. So far, I mean, of all of everything here. <laughs> but we'll see, we'll see. Void Abomination. 8 mana, 5, 4, of all. When I'm summoned, grant me and grant me all positive keywords allies have had this game. Alright, doesn't matter if they see them or not. I get all the keywords. When I see an ally with new key, new positive keywords, Grant it to me. So basically, this is... Okay, so, like, here's the combo. You get a bunch... You play this, you get a bunch of keywords on the Void of the Abomination. Then you second skin it and give all those keywords onto Kaisa. And then this does a bunch of damage. That That's the, that's the finisher combo right there. I mean, in, and in that scenario... All right. Seems fair. Oh, and, another, and another thing. Huh. This could very easily... This is basically... Um... What, what's the call? What's the card called? 8 mana. Arsenal. Yeah, this is an arsonist. Or... The, the arsenal. <laughs> the card. The one they recently buffed. Oh my goodness. Well, also kind of her. Because she's scout. Um... But yeah, this is basically Arsenal. Huh? That's crazy. Wait, this is even like Arsenal can no longer get Scout, but you could get Scout on this thing. This is a better Arsenal. What? And then you can put Scout on Kaisa. That's. Mmm. Riot. Body B. I'm not liking the direction here. You take out you take out things that were quote unquote toxic and a little bit too strong for other cards, but then you've added it again in a, in a slightly different form for the new cards. Ah, uh, uh, riot! <laughs> All right, and then we have the two mana three one Velvethi Elder. Hmm. Okay, big question though. Wow. I get that like you want like a spell shield trigger to get the help you get evolve, but within the region of Sharima, there are already plenty of ways to get spell shield. Include especially with supercharge. Yeah. So like maybe not you could get away with not running this and run like a different two drop. That is more desirable, but this is not a terrible two drop either. I mean, like having a 
three one is a really a bad stat line for a lot of two drops, but the fact that it doesn't instantly die to vile beast or even mystic shot is pretty good. So I think this is like a similar to these cards. This one's okay. I'm more worried about the Kaisa and this Void Abomination with Supercharge can do. Oh my gosh. Like, let's say you don't even get the Overwhelm. You can just, like, oh, Herder, I'm going, like, I'm going to give Kaisa this. And then this thing also gets it. And then I attack with them. Hmm. And I'm assuming Evolve counts as its own keyword, right? Gosh, that's gonna be that's a little silly. <laughs> All right, Hive Herald, six mana, three six, evolve. Play grant a unit and meet each other's positive keywords. All right, this is the like if this is like the finisher, this is like I'm going to proc and level Kaisa now. This is the Kaisa leveler and this is the finisher. So you you'll definitely be running this card. Like, I don't see why you wouldn't. Grant an ally, uh, grant a unit, and me each other's positive keywords. I mean... Oh. Wait, you can give Evolve to something. <laughs> this thing gives Evolve to something, wait. So not only does it get all the keywords, it also... It also gives the unit its targeting Evolve. Wait, if you give, you could give, you could give Pantheon Evolve and give him plus two plus two. That's a little scary. Oh, that's kind of really scary. What the heck? Huh. Hmm. I don't think this one's as crazy as, like, Void Abomination, but this is definitely could be a very, very solid card in the deck. And then we have a Void Seeker. One mana, slow speed, deal one damage to a follower. If you're evolved, deal three instead. Alright, so it's a follower. Okay? Void Seeker is deal one to a follower. A one mana, deal one to a follower that can become deal three instead. I mean, if it wasn't follower, it'd probably be busted. And I mean, one one of the region weaknesses of Sharima is that it doesn't have a lot of direct removal. That is, that is one weakness that uh, Sharima has. So it kind of makes sense that this is, this is kind of underwhelming. Because it's a Sharima card. It could see play. It could not see play. I don't know. It it honestly depends on what region you're pairing up Kaisa with. Like if you're playing playing Kaisa with a region like Targon that also doesn't really have. A lot of cheap removal that directly damages and controls the board. I could see it, could see it. So I don't, I don't think it will. This is definitely not the best card here. In fact, I think this is actually the worst card right here because just tar only being able to target a follower is just that bad. All right, now we have six mana focus speed. I haven't seen these cards. Wild claws. Ferocity. Transform an allied follower into an Alpha Claw. Alpha Claw. That's the 6 mana, right? The 6 mana Frail Yard card that has 7 6 overwhelm. Transform. Like, you, you turn one of your minions into a 6 drop for 6 mana. Eh. Her speed is good, I guess. Eh. It gives me a lot of uh, Battle Fury vibes. And how it's used like it, this would be only be really be used in like an overwhelm otk deck and transforms does transform keep keywords i actually don't know i don't know if transform actually keeps keywords that's actually kind of important to know like for an example if you have like a bell that the elder with spell shield and you play wild call ferocity on this and it becomes a 7-6 Overwhelm. Does it keep? Does it keep the Spell Shield? I'm going to lean on probably not. Um, 
yeah, I think this is probably a very un underwhelming card. Um, maybe you'll have some niche use in some overwhelm decks. But I, I struggle to under- like, you can't even play this on the stack. You have to do this preemptively, so it's like, eh. If anything, it it's a nerf to the, uh, uh, financer, dude. It's a nerf to him. Gives him another, like, weaker card that he has to draw from. Uh, from the pool. Alright. Okay, so, four mana, landmark. Noxus. Triparian Training Pits. Each round, the first time an ally attacks with five power. Ally. So, you put this in a Yeti deck with the Grey Apothecary. And so you rally, like, every turn. And then the the units that have five power that you send into the send at the at the enemy they die, when they die they they turn into other cards for value i mean that's a little that's a little insane i mean it is certainly a temple loss and you don't get the guarantee that you will rally that turn and it does use specifically unit mana specifically unit mana it has to be unit mana for the rally. But the rally can be propped multiple times. So certain decks, which they do exist out there, that don't have a lot of landmark removal. Go. Uh, and honestly, you only need to proc this once for it to, to have its effect be worth it. Like, like you, you do some temple loss for the next attack to gain... Like, if you do this on an attacking turn, and they have no answers for your board state, then you instantly get your value back. Because, like, in my opinion, rally is worth, at base, four mana. And so being able to only rally once pays for its cost on its own. And then if you be able to do it over and over again, whew, this is basically Garen on a, on a landmark. A leveled Garen on a landmark. Hmm. Hmm. Rally can be very toxic. I'm a little concerned about this card. It is an epic card, so it may just be trash. And I may be wrong. But I think this this card is going to be pretty toxic. Like, I can already imagine you playing this with Ash. And you attack multiple times with Ash. Level her up really easy with protection and Freljord. And then, like, you basically make sure you have their board unable to block. And then you get a rally every turn. Wait, what? Every other turn, I should say. Hmm. Riot. I don't like this. He no likey. Alright. Now we have 8 mana, 8-8. Eight, eight. Demacian. Lord Eldred. Mage Seeker Leader. Tough. Other allies and your nexus have done. So that's like a Lissandra level up on an Aatrop unit. Sorry, like, giving everything tough, it's not enough. It's not enough. Especially when you have a game, the current game, in its state, with the rallies. Alright? Like, I get it. Like, these eight, this, these massive eight drops in Demacia want you to be, like, like, more, like, more late game bombs with Demacia or, like, stall tools. Uh, so you can do crazy things. With your board, it's just not worth it. They don't they don't end the game fast enough. They just don't end the game. Like you compare this card to this card. Who's ending the game sooner? This card. This card's better. Trash. Oh. I see Yasuo. Uh oh. Buy mana landmark. Windswept Hill Lock. When I'm summoned, draw Yasuo. It's the Yasuo boat. A Yasuo boat on a landmark. Does that save Yasuo? Does that actually make Yasuo good? And stun the strongest enemy. I do like stun the strongest enemy. When you attack, when you gain the attack token, stun the strongest enemy. And every other turn after that, you strung the strongest enemy. Okay, let's let's do this purely mathematically. 
a draw, specifically a draw of a specific unit, Yasuo, that can be worth about two or three mana, or take two or three mana. Probably around two, because we think of Entreat, and Entreat barely, barely, nichely sees play in very specific decks. So that's like two mana worth of value right there. And then we have Stun the Strongest Enemy. Now we have a landmark like that in Shirima. And that does that for one mana. So that's about one mana worth of value. So you get three mana worth of value right off the bat. That's not terrible. I mean, like, other landmarks, you risk getting no value whatsoever upon play. So that that's at least good to see. Uh, when you gain the attack token, stun the strongest enemy. I mean, I don't know if that's even mana efficient. I mean, it certainly works well, like if with a Yasuo, like this this effect becomes worth it when you have Yasuo on the field and it draws you a Yasuo. So I think that's where like the extra value comes in, because it like Yas the biggest weakness of Yasuo decks is not having Yasuo. You're stunning for no reason. Now this is a stun engine that gives you Yasuo, and, and it will stun the strongest enemy, which can also be really useful for attacking in. All right, I'm gonna say it's probably not terrible, but I also don't think it's going to be very good. Um, you know, mostly because a lot of landmark removal now is three mana, and landmark removal is more prominent. Um, you play this, you get three mana value for five mana, and then they remove it with three mana, three or four mana. So that's a one or two mana drop in value. And that's massive. That's absolutely massive. There's a reason like most of the five drop uh, landmarks never see play. Most of them never, ever, ever see play. And I, I don't think this is going to be much different. However, this does actually work pretty well with Malphite. Oh, and summoning it gives you two Yasuos. That's kind of funny. So you could do this with uh, Talia. So you copy this with Talia, get two Yasuos. Hey, maybe that's worth it. So maybe that's worth it. We'll see. We'll see. It could it could leave its mark, but I'm um, it's also epic. I, I think this is going to be a bad card. I think Yasuo is ever cursed to be uh, a meme tier, a meme tier card. Now we have Starhound Pack, four mana two five faded. My faded buffs are granted everywhere. Allied Star Pack, okay. Granted to Allied Star Pack everywhere. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Yeah, that's busted. I mean, like, you think of Wounded White Fang, right? The uh, three mana, two, three. With the uh, Faded and uh, Fury. That grows pretty well. This is uh, just one more mana. Has way more health. That's two more health. Five health is a big deal. My health is a huge deal for this card, and it's faded, so you can easily get it to the point where its attack starts to meet matter a bunch. And it's really thick, and then it gives that thickness to all the other ones that you draw. I, I think this is this is a staple now in faded decks. This is pretty good. Now you imagine putting, you put Yumi on this man. Oh no. Oh no, putting Yumi on this man. And then we even have, we have Supercharger now. Oh no. Oh no. This could be very scary. I mean, like, honestly, I would run Kaisa Targon with, with Pantheon. And I would run this. It give it gives me so much. Holy crap. And then you have all those uh, lucky finds. You get a bunch of these lucky finds, and that you can start putting onto 
uh, your big boy star star starhound pack, or you can put them onto your Kaisa, uh, and all of it works. It targets your allies, and then it gives the keywords for the Kaisa level up. So you're doing two, hitting two birds with one stone. Oh my gosh, this this is a really good card. Riot, why why you make Kaisa so strong? Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I completely off base, but I think Kaisa is going to be insane, absolutely insane. All right, Warded Husk. When you play an ally, kill me to grant it my stats and positive keywords. This is a token. You can't just play this. And it's immobile. I, we have to see what the what makes this in order for us to judge, like, if it's when you play an ally. So it could be, like, you could summon this, or you could put it into your hand. It has spell shield on its own. Yeah, I don't know. It's an interesting card, certainly. I think it's really interesting. Like, you can pop this. Like, opponent could pop this to make sure that you don't get the spell shield on something that you want. But you still get plus one health, which is not bad. And it means they're spending resources on a one mana card. Ah, I mean could be could be really good. Could also not be very good. We'll see. But that's basically the reveal. I hope you all enjoyed my general reaction to everything. And I would ask you to leave a like, comment, subscribe, and ring that bell. I'll see you all in the next one. Bye bye.